Hi, this is Marnie Marcus and Sue Painter back with the online business reality show or Marnie and Sue's peep show where we pull back the curtains on our lives and businesses to give you a peek into what's happening. And uh, we're both kind of frazzled today. Sue's been off doing uh, PT, you said, and uh, just got back and I've been dealing with kid stuff. So <laughs> anyway, flash is what it is. So um, we thought we'd talk about what to do when you're frazzled and you still have to have your business running maybe. And, uh, any thoughts on that, Sue? Yeah, we actually, uh, I think Marnie and I have both been frazzled lately. Um, I was running around crazy today because I, um, now that we're back in Florida, I'm of course back working with Frank, my wonderful PT guy who helps me with my leg. But then also I decided just to, uh, engage in cardiac rehab which is where you exercise and you wear a monitor so that they monitor your heart. And they wanted me to do that, or I had the opportunity to do that because of the heart attack that I had about a month and maybe a month and a half ago now, five weeks ago, maybe. So I went to that today, which ended up being not anything like what I was expecting. I mean, I, I actually work harder on my leg with Frank. Um, but what can I say? That's just the, the way it goes. But, um, I misjudged the time and that was a technology thing. So I didn't think I was going to be here for the peep show today, but here I am. So what can you do when you're frazzled? I think for one thing, um, I always try to take, you know, about a minute and a half and just do deep breathing and get myself focused. That helps my brain to focus on what is it that I really should be prioritizing right now at this moment in time. And Marnie and I both use essential oil. She was just sticking one under her nose, and I was just sticking one under my nose. This isn't for calming, actually, but the one. But I do have others for calming. And then Marnie, you were using one that was, a, I guess, a peaceful or calming one, weren't you? Yeah, peace. It's called. Peace. Yeah, it's like. Um, Is that a DoTerra one? This one is actually a Melaleuca one. I, I was trying yeah. to Melaleuca started to carry these, and I've been with them for years, so. I just thought I'd try some of theirs, but this was yeah. like, like citrus and yang yang and yeah, uh, chamomile, German chamomile. Yeah, chamomile is good for for soothing. I guess the point that I want to make, and we'll see what Marnie has to say about this, is that setting up your environment for what I call success uh, really has a lot to do with keeping your mental state and your attitude. Um, and your business on the right track, which is one reason I'm constantly talking about the fact that if you want to own your own business, you also have to work on yourself. You have to grow yourself to grow your business. And every time I see people who try to work on just the business end of things without working on what's going on with inside them, um, then they get crosswise with their business or they start feeling like they're not doing much toward their business or they're unmotivated or they're not performing. So if you have a business or even a project where you feel like you're just, you're really not ever doing anything with it, you know, you should be and you feel guilty about it, but you know, you're just, you're not making it, you know, you're not doing it. You're not doing what it takes to have done then you really have to think about what is inside of you that is resisting that. And is it because you honestly are growing in a different direction or is it because you really have to take a hard look at yourself about um, how you get resistant and then you really get kind of emotionally lazy toward doing the things that you say you want to achieve in life. And there's a difference. You know, sometimes it's legitimate and, and often it's not. And so we have to be honest, really rigidly honest with ourselves about that. Um, and so I don't know, Marnie, what you have to say about that, but thinking about how we can set up our environment, like Marnie and I both have these right at our desk, our little essential oils. And I usually have water or iced tea. Bill just handed me a glass of iced tea before we did the show because I was running in from the driveway having just been to cardiac rehab. And so having, you know, something that is water or tea and having essential oils and having the ability to, yeah, there's your water and having the ability to calm yourself with breath work. Um, all of those things, those are just some of the things you can do to keep your environment so that it supports you toward the things that you say that you want to achieve or do in life. 
Yeah. And uh, another tip, when I get really frazzled, I got just so much going on. If I get it out of my head onto paper, there's something about that that makes it not seem so overwhelming anymore. Because when it's all just bouncing around in your head, it's it seems like a lot more than it is when I finally put it on the paper. When I put it on the paper, I'll go, is that all it was? And it's just that? Yeah. Okay, now I can break it down and check it off and get it done. But while it's swimming in there, I get really overwhelmed. Yeah. And I think the other thing is to not sweat the small stuff. And, you know, there's that saying, don't sweat the small stuff, and it's all small stuff. And... I don't know if I totally agree with that or not, but there are little things that you could think about as, um, quote, imperfections, where you want things to be perfect. And I'm noticing something for myself just now because now that we're in our Florida home, I ran in off the street real quickly and I couldn't really set up in the studio. So I just have our home behind us. That's what you're seeing. And I'm seeing over here that Bill took off his shirt and left it draped on the couch, which I would just as soon not be on video. But there's that thing about does it really matter and is it perfect, you know, do things have to be perfect and what can you let go of? So that's a good example of, you know, I really didn't think about or have time to look and have to do housekeeping behind me before we got the show started. So that's just kind of a funny thing, but there are people who would get really hung up on that and make that just as important as something else they do that could really bring money in the door. So when you don't know how to prioritize and everything is, and you do sweat the small stuff, then you keep yourself in a real heightened state of being frazzled. Yeah, yeah. I got a jacket back there. So I, I did that just for you and Bill to make you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> we're, excited, we're excited to be back down here, and um, and I've been thinking a lot about um, how my life evolves and how it has been evolving lately, and the things that I see that are coming up for 2016 that are going to be different. And I've also been thinking a lot about the evolution of the online industry, Marnie, and the things that you and I would see that are happening as things seem to be harder to get, you know, it's harder and harder. If you're new in the online world, it's harder and harder in my mind to get traction, to get something going. And I don't know what you have to say about that, but I've been thinking about that a lot lately because, you know, I work sometimes with people who are brand new and they hear all these stories about making $10,000 in a minute online and all that. And so I'm really cognizant right now about what is it that will really work and is it, um, it's definitely not as easy as it used to be. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try, but it does mean you have to be really smart about what you're doing. So Marnie, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about that because I've really been thinking about that a lot over the last week. Yeah. Well, I've had the opportunity to work with a couple uh, clients in their Facebook ads lately. And one of them, I mean, they've got, their product funnel down to a science. They have upsells, downsells, cross sales, you know, the whole thing is yeah. really impressive. I mean, I'm kind of learning a little bit just from the way they have it all structured. And, um, you know, just finding the audiences that will work well for them. And it takes a lot of testing and tweaking. And a lot of people don't like that and they don't want to do that. You know, the kind of the. Um, yeah. I don't like to do it either. I mean, I understand, but I'm I mean, not saying it's not necessary. I'm saying it's not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. 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 And I've noticed that, um, it really, I mean, a lot of times we just want to throw spaghetti at the wall and see if it sticks. And I've done a lot of that <laughs> myself to see like, okay, I'll throw that out see if that works, throw that out see, and not be very scientific about testing it and everything. But I've, I've noticed when somebody has got, a chunk of change to spend on advertising you know want to you want to spend it wisely you know and i think it would i hate the word behoove but <laughs> it was, as as somebody who's maybe smaller who doesn't have the budget to still use some of those um testing and tweaking tools it, even if it's just going behind the scenes and looking at your google analytics it's really easy to put google analytics on a wordpress site just with the free Google Analytics plugin. And so as you can see, okay, what pages are people hitting? How many have, how many people have hit my site versus how many are, have turned into a buyer? And if nobody's 
people are hitting, but they're not buying, then you need to tweak something. You need to adjust the page. And um, I know a lot of people just don't want to do all that, but I think it's important as competitive as it is to get our messages out there that we kind of start doing a little bit, a little bit more scientific. So that's kind of been my new resolve to be more scientific, be very scientific. I mean, with, with ideal marketers, I studied the stats. I'd see which ads, if I move this ad here, what kind of results to how much does that increase my revenue? I mean, I was reading an article that I wrote like, I don't know, four or five years ago where I was trying to raise some extra revenue for college expenses and all this other stuff. And I had all these ideas instead of just jumping to one of the ideas, I was like, stop back, step back and really ponder. Is that really what I need to do? And everything was sort of like, no, no, no. And I made some small little tweak to some code on that site and it generated like $10,000 in revenue. Uh, and I think you could do the same thing with say these Facebook ads, you make a small tweak, you hit a, you maybe say just men, not women, or you uh, change a headline. It could make a huge difference, but you kind of have to get in there and play with it. And anyway, I enjoy playing with the stuff. I mean, I'm having fun doing this for my clients, but I think it's, I think it's possible to expand your market is what I'm trying to say. Even though there's a lot of competition, I think there's, it's possible to do it, but you got to be strategic. You have to be strategic. I agree. And you also have to be very clear about who your market is, which many, many people are not very clear about who your market is. So then they have trouble structuring ads like they're like they need to be structured and they don't know how, they don't know how to tweak them. And so then that that's problematic in and of itself. Um, something came through my mind while you were talking. Oh, I know. I was having a conversation with Lynn Terry the other day, you know, Lynn. Yeah. And, she was making the point that she goes into her C panel and looks at the stats that the um, host, her hosting site provides to her for her websites and feels that they are more important and a lot more accurate than Google Analytics. To the point, uh, uh -huh. yeah. what? I look at them too and I found them to be more accurate as well. When I had idea marketers, Google Analytics wouldn't report a large chunk of what my traffic really was. When she and I were talking about this, um, you know, she, she lives not far from where I live and when I'm in Nashville. And so we would get together and have lunch every now and then. And I really admire Lynn for what she's been able to accomplish for herself over the years because she really is a super blogger and a super affiliate and has made her living off the internet for many, many years now. And she, she was said that she really pays more attention to what's in her C panel and, and that she really kind of blows off Google Analytics now. And that surprised me, but that was something I really learned from having lunch with her that day. So I've been looking, um, I, didn't, I really did not even have my C panel set up to do statistics for some of my sites. So I had to go and get that set up and now I can look at that better. But I have to say it is not my favorite thing to do. And it's probably something I should delegate out and hire somebody to do that and then give me a report every week or something. Cause I just, it's not my forte, but I do agree with you a hundred percent that it's important to do. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good point though about analytics. I had that had gone out of my mind. I was thinking how a fast way somebody who's not really techie could just get some kind of stats, but yeah. I do remember that with, it didn't report a lot of my traffic. Yeah, that's what she said. That's exactly what she said. She said it didn't, Google Analytics did not report a lot of her traffic. So I thought that I'm was not, interesting. No. Yeah. Are you going to attend the NAMS virtual thing coming up in the next, whenever it is, week or two? They're selling tickets for it now. This one's on building your product funnel, right? I think, I think that's so. the this one. It looks like a good one. Yeah. You know, they did really, really well with the last one. They had more people than they've ever had. So what I heard, I wouldn't have thought that off no. the virtual. Wow. I wouldn't have either because I did, I heard almost no buzz about it. Yeah. I don't know, but it <laughs> evidently did really well. So, but I'll tell you, I, they know how to do product funnels. I will tell you that. If you want to learn how to do product funnels and that's what they're focusing on, I would think it would be worth. Right. I, I haven't decided if I'm, the problem is I haven't blocked off the time 
I, I didn't mm. get the date. I mean, I, I have been unaware of when it was, the date had not been coming to me in emails or anything. And then all of a sudden I saw on one of the NAMS forums, oh, well, it's almost here and they're selling tickets. And I thought, well, I haven't really set that time apart. And I find that if I buy something for something virtual and I can't really attend it live, then I don't get the opportunity to do the questions and answers. And I probably will never go back and sit and watch hours and hours of video. I mean, I just don't have time to do it. Right. So I don't know. You think yeah, you'll have to weigh out their time, I guess. That everybody would have to weigh out their time. Yeah. They have available. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what I'll do. It does sound interesting if you want to know about product funnels. So I don't know. So you, if you go, Barney, you may have to tell me what you learned. We'll have to do a peep show about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're doing. You're, when is it that you're actually out on your own from Alley, where you're all just? Yeah. Um, for the, for people who are watching who are don't who don't know, I won't be working with Alley after the end of this year. We're finishing up the Elevate program for 2015, and um, there will not be an Elevate program going forward in 2016. Um, so, of course, about a third of what I do is for Allie and two thirds of what I do is my own anyway. So I'm just going to be doing my own thing. And I am cre I have created a new um, program, a new all virtual, all group program so that it could have a lower price point going forward into 2016. And the card is open for that now. And the name of the program is Evolve, Evolve 2016. And I am going to weave in the things that Marnie and I talk about a lot, which is um, all of the things that happen with us internally and in our environment around us and how we manage those and how we manage ourselves so that we keep the focus on our business when it needs to be and we know how to let that go and keep the focus on personal when it needs to be. But don't fall into all personal and then you just never get around to doing your business. Um, so I have topics um, and you can go, if anybody's interested in it, the cart's open now and actually there's an early bird special price for it between now and the 15th of November. Um, and you can go to confidentmarketer.com slash evolve, E-V-O-L-V-E, -E, and it will give you, um, there's a little video and there's all month by month by month exactly what I'm going to be teaching and everything that's included in the program. And it's designed to be no travel. It's designed to be all virtual and all group so that the price point is, is low and so that um, you don't have to do any travel. And the reason that I'm doing that is because there seems to be two distinct markets on the on, in the online world right now, Marnie, or at least that's how I see it. I'd love to hear your opinion. There's one market that really likes to hit the road and go see, like, go to live event after live event after live event. And I, I have seen people who I know um, being on Facebook or just because I know what they're up to They've been to four or five events this fall because, you know, fall is like the big event time. Everybody has their event. And so that requires a lot of time away and a lot of travel costs and a lot of hotel costs and a lot of, you know, paying for the ticket kind of thing. But people feel like it's worth it to them because they network there and they find people who can become their clients and they feel like it's a marketing tool, really. Then there are the people who, because of kids at home or because of a sick husband or just because they don't have the money, they really don't want to engage in a coaching program that requires travel. They want it to be all virtual and um, they're willing to put the work in and they're serious about building their business, but they don't want to have to hit the road every quarter or every six months and go meet the whole big group somewhere live. So Evolve is really designed to be that. It's designed to, for people who really don't want to have to put the money and the time into travel, but they really want a high level um, very expert coaching experience for me. So anyway, it's confidentmarketer.com slash evolve if you're interested to check it out. And I'd be interested to hear from you if you see those two different camps of the people who like to travel and go to live events and the people who really want to do everything virtually. It's kind of like what we were just talking about with NAMS. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely that way. I see that with my own clients. Um, there's a lot of people that just don't want to, they don't want to do all that travel. They don't, yeah. you know, so offering that, I think it's cool that they get to get like an Allie Brown, you know, consultant coach to work with them. You know I mean? I think that's, you want to amp that up. I mean, you need to, 
you know, milk that or something, you know, in your marketing, you know, hit some Allie Brown with your Facebook advertising or something, hit some of her audience or I don't know. She let you do that. Can you, um, you can at least, you can at least market the audience, whether you mention her or not. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm excited wow. about it. I'm, um, it is, I feel like I've, I've structured the program to put in, a lot of what I know and there'll be some surprises that people will get kind of along the way and it's a 10 month program it's going to go from January through October um, but actually if people sign up now I'm going to give them two bonus months of content for November and December just to kind of get them going before the year kicks off and then we're going to end at the end of October and we're going to have a party a virtual party to end the year because I find that a lot of people don't want to really Go, to get coaching and work hard and fast on their business during November and December anyway. So November and December next year will be quiet months. And people, if, they, if they're still going, they can take everything they've learned and they can continue to implement. Or they can purchase some one-on-one -on -one time with me if they want to carry them through those two months. But it's going to be a 10-month program. So I'm excited about it. Or I should say it is a 10-month program since the shopping cart is actually open now. So I'm excited about that. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. That's great. Great. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. I guess, I mean, I'm kind of mixed right now. I like to go to live events in one way, but they do. Um, it's, it's harder for me to travel because of my leg. And although it's easier than it used to be, I did just go to Scottsdale to be with Allie at the last Elevate leadership retreat for the year. Um, well, I guess it'll be the last one, actually. Um, I was in Scottsdale a couple of weeks ago for that. But this week I was supposed to go to the West Coast to the joint venture, um, the joint venture live event with Milana Lachinsky and Rich German. And then from there go on up the coast and go to a two day event, uh, Taki Moore's million dollar coach, million dollar coaching program. And I had it all set up. I had the plane ticket spot, I had the hotel taken care of and the cars and all that stuff. And I just decided I'd really rather stay home and focus on, you know, launching the program and kind of getting things set for the year. And I just, I just didn't want to go be on the road for seven days. So I backed out of it. And actually, the cardiologist kind of didn't really want me flying three times within six weeks of when I'd had a heart attack anyway. So I kind of said, well, I have to be in Scottsdale with the alley thing. So I'll let the others go. Um, and maybe I'll ratchet it up again some next year. But... I don't know. I'm kind of going through this thing of I really want to focus and I really want to work with people who are who really want to dig in and, and build their business. And, and I just want to I, I don't want to be like off somewhere when they need me. I kind of want to focus on that right now. I'm excited about it. So I decided to not do those two trips. But I do have a lot of travel coming up. Um, I'm going to Miami over New Year's to do a mastermind with a, a friend of mine. We get together once a year somewhere in the U.S. and hunker down for a day and really do a great mastermind with each other. And um, and then I'm probably going to go over to Fort Lauderdale in February for um, the three-day um, heroic speaking training that Michael Port is doing. Because as you know, I'm one of his Book Yourself Solid certified coaches. And um, I don't know, I kind of would like to do a little bit more public speaking now. And I just would like to meet a kind of a different, I'm kind of getting annoyed with some people who are online folks, online business people. So I'm kind of wanting to get out and meet other people right now. Kind of like you were talking about um, a couple of months ago, you were talking about, well, maybe I should just do local things. Remember when you were talking about that? Yeah. I don't know if you still have, if you still have pros or cons that way, but. Yeah. Well, you know, I really enjoy doing, um, where people came to my house <laughs> and worked with them for a couple of days on product creation. They weren't incredibly local. They drove six hours, each one of them, one from the north and one from the up from the south. But um, I kind of thought I'd get more local people, but it, you know, people travel. You had your own little live event right at your house, right? Yeah, it was just like I did last year when I did the business intensive days, and I had I had I limited it to four people. Um, at each place, one in Nashville and one in Florida. And ha I actually had people in my home, yeah. And did you like it? Do you think I'll repeat it? 
I like it. I'll probably do it again. Um, I will say that the people that get the very best results from my program are the ones who are in a classroom setting with me for about two and a half days. Because have to implement. there's more people, they don't get kind of talking as much and kind of get off tangent. When you have like a cozy, intimate environment of a home or something, uh, people tend to relax and they you, it's easy to get off tangent and not really stay on task is yeah. if you're sitting on a classroom at a desk. Yeah. They get the best results out of I've taught it every which way I can figure out how to teach it virtually to one on one to whatever. And I think I think the classroom setting is best. But now, well, could you do a local classroom like just in a, a small conference room or boardroom at a hotel somewhere near you if yeah. you did it? I just need to find a good location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, in Nashville, near where I live, actually the, the little Holiday Inn Express had a really good small classroom and it would seat about 15 people and it was real near. There were all kinds of restaurants up and down the road. People could stay there. The meeting room was pleasant. There were windows along one side. It kind of overlooked a little courtyard. And it was not, it was like a hundred bucks. I mean, it wasn't very expensive to do. So that might work for you. And it just kind of gave you, it kind of gave, gave me a, um, a contained kind of quiet um, and very structured environment where they had table, you know, they had a table they could write on and put their notebooks on and all that kind of stuff. So if you decide to do it again and you don't for whatever reason want to do it in your home, maybe just the Holiday Inn Express somewhere around you would, maybe that would work and not be yep. real expensive. That's a good idea. That's a good, real good idea. Oh. I like the yeah. idea of doing that here. The problem that I get into, unfortunately, where I live in Nashville and Florida, Nashville is so celebrity and so entertainment industry that there is to do an event there is horribly expensive because they're used to dealing with the networks and, and big entertainers and they charge terribly for even the tiniest little room in a hotel. So it's not a cost effective place for a small business owner to do things. And then here in Florida, while we're here, which is typically during the winter and the spring, you know, 50, hundred million people are also here. You can't get a hotel room at all. And if you do, of course, it's five times the money than it would be off season. So it's a bad time to ask people to travel here because hotel rooms are hard to come by. Meeting rooms are hard to come by. So it's almost like I have to, I need to find another location or Florida off season, but then it's hot and who wants to come here off season, you know? So I keep thinking about where I would do it. I actually had a friend advise, why don't you just go to Fort Lauderdale? Like in the May time frame after Easter, a lot of people like to come to Fort Lauderdale, go over to the East Coast, and there's a ton of hotel rooms that are not crowded that time of year. So I might do that this year. I don't know. Good idea. See, things are evolving. I've already decided that my word for 2016 and probably maybe for the rest of my life is evolve. Because we're all, look at how many changes you've had in your life. You're married now, you've had your husband move in, and you've had two grandchildren this year yeah right yeah. and one didn't one of them just come and do a surprise visit with you yeah he just spent the last week with the little girl <laughs> yeah. are they gone now or are they still here i i think they've they've left they were next door staying and um uh, i had to run back i told him goodbye i said i gotta go but my ditzy son, I shouldn't say that, but he's lost his wallet. So they were scavenging all over the house trying to find his wallet <laughs> before they could leave. So that he might be there. Wallet, they're gone. But <laughs> okay, well, it's two twenty-seven, and we're going to go a few minutes early because so Marnie might still be able to say another goodbye to her son, and I have a two thirty client. So I okay. guess we're going to sign off until next week. And Marnie, I don't even know if we set a time for next week or whatever. I'll look at that and make sure I have it right. But it's good to talk with everybody. And did we, I guess we didn't have any questions. You didn't say there was anybody. I didn't see any. Oh. Yeah, didn't see any questions. Okay. All right. We will see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. Bye, Marnie. I got to run. Bye. Okay, see you. Bye-bye.